everyone. This is Patty with Get Personal with Patty, and we are doing what is apparently the norm these days, right? This is a Zoom meeting, um, and we are doing a Zoom meeting um, today, April 20th, Monday. It's actually Patriots Day in Massachusetts, um, so there was no work for me. Unfortunately, one of our one of our uh, attendees, Pamela, I'm sure she worked today. Um, so we have Pamela with us, Pam Why Not, and Amanda Blaze who was here with us in January when we were speaking about the, our goals for budgeting. So this is our quarter um, check-in. And uh, we're gonna actually go right to Pam because I know she has to be off in, in about a half hour. Um, right now it's the three of us are on Zoom as well as uh, Suzanne from Fairhaven. She's listening and if she has any questions, she'll Hopefully you can, you can, I think if you look to the right of your Zoom screen, it says raise hand. So I think uh, I'll be paying attention if anybody wants to say something, we'll kind of do it like that. Because if everyone talks at one time, I know it, it doesn't really, you can't hear mm -hmm. other people. So you just kind of need to do one of these. And I, I'm the one that tends to talk over people. So I'm going to try to be quiet and really learn from these two amazing women. So we're going to start with Pam. Um, Pam, hi. Hi. Tell us, Pam, how's, um, how's everything going with your budgeting and for your personal girl goals for the first quarter? Um, yeah, so, um, well, so I'll handle the goals. I think um, what we had talked about was because I, I really had a long-term goal. So it was just to, you know, pay off um, half of our debt this year and the other half next year. Um, so we are definitely tracking on that. Um, um, which is great. Um, we did have um, a big tax bill that was a surprise, sort of. Um, I did start looking at, you know, what it might be. And maybe about two months ago, I realized, mm, we're probably gonna have a big bill here. <laughs> um, and so I actually, um, so that was one of the sidebars of like the extra jobs, right, that I had <laughs> was that um, I didn't have enough sort of coming out um, as a result. Anyway, the good news is because I budgeted and because we've been smart about um, what our money, um, we can pay this bill. All right. We can cash flow this bill. <laughs> I mean, that is just awesome. That, that's to me, it's awesome. I can honestly tell you that like if I had gotten this bill, this tax bill last year, um, it would have been that like, it would have been like, we have no idea what we're going to do. We're just going to have mm -hmm. to go on payments and pay all kinds of interest, right? Like it, we would have had no idea what to do. So just just having the budget, um, planning, putting that money aside, seeding that, okay, well now instead of putting this towards the debt, we're gonna put this in savings because we might have a tax bill, like so huge. Um, so it's going well. I feel like, um, so where I'm still kind of weak, just to be like honest about it is, yeah. so you guys know I use the everydollar.com um, free app mm -hmm. from Dave Ramsey. Um, and it's really good about, um, but I'm being cheap and I'm using the free version. There's like a premium version that allows you to do what you guys do in terms of budgeting per paycheck. Mm -hmm. um, and it allows you more easily separate that out. And I'm not using that. And I think I'm going to splurge and pay the couple of bucks and do it. <laughs> um, because I'm having, a, I'm having to like plan my month and that's going well. But then, you know, figuring out which bills I'm paying, like you said, with this check or this check or this check, like, which mm -hmm. are doing that? That I'm still having to do kind of in a separate spreadsheet. So I feel like that's, I got to work on that um, and get a better system around that. Um, but yeah. Um, one of the steps with the budget mom is just using a calendar. Um, so you could even incorporate just the calendar part of things. And so on this calendar has every single time you get paid and then in color coding, it has, so the, this green was when I got paid. I, I know you can't really see it, but it's green. And then the pill, the bills that we pay with that green are, is highlighted as well. Um, so that's, so that's the calendar method. So you don't, so using the, the one that you use and then just adding the calendar part to it, you could almost break down exactly, okay, I get paid here, and then that that paycheck is gonna cover that, 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 and maybe that. You know what I mean? You know? Yeah, yep. 
No, that makes a lot of sense. I think, and for me, cause you know, I'm like, uh, you know, both of you love the paper and you're so good with that. And for me, like, ah, like I can't do it. <laughs> and, that, so and that's okay. For me, like I have to like have it on here. So, yeah. uh, but I am going to take your advice and put it on my calendar. So like payday is on Friday. So on my calendar, I'll have a little pop-up that says pay this bill, this bill, this bill today. Right. Like, right. Um, good idea. Thank you. Right. Yeah, the digital, there is quite a few people um, that do just the digital part of things um, with good, I mean, I don't know what it means because, you know, I do like the paper and I do like the computer, but um, I like seeing it on, like me, exactly what you just said. You like having it popped up on your phone or your computer whenever it's there. And I like seeing it on paper, like writing it out and seeing it on paper for me is, um, you know, but a lot of people do do the budget mom um, on their iPad with good notes, right? They, this whole screen thing, and I think it looks awesome, but I, I don't know if I could, I, I'm confused with all these, look, whoa, 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 whoa. I have enough paper in front of me. Um, so Pam, you're doing awesome as usual, right? I mean, so just a little recap um, of what we talked about in, um, Jan it was, we talked in February, but we were actually talking about January and, our beginning budget, but you had um, at that point had already paid how much, you know, in debt in like whatever it was, three or six months. Um, well, so as of February, we had been doing it like nine months, nine or ten months, yeah. um, and it, I think at that point it was like twenty six thousand. Um, so, yeah, um, and um, so I work a job where I have a a, a salary. And then I get bonuses every quarter, which um, is definitely helpful in terms of the debt payoff, right? Because it, what it did was like force me to, we live on less than just the salary, um, which we didn't used to do. So we had to cut and do all that. But, um, but yeah, so we've, we've, we're definitely on track to, um, I won't go into specific numbers because yeah, it can get over. I know last time we had a couple people say like, what, how did she do that? 26,000. Right. What does she right. make? It's crazy. Um, but, you know, but on the same token, it doesn't matter how much you make, right? I mean, because if you stop and think about it, some people might watch the video and say, wow, she, how can she pay? Oh, that's, bec that's because she, you know, that's because she, you know, works a full-time job that has, um, that gets bonuses where I work a, a full-time job and I don't get a bonus, but you know, to go over my stuff, like I, I just paid off a credit card completely. And, and this is, I'll be honest, this is, it was, uh, it was $1,500 as of January 1st. It's paid off as of um, this month, right? April, April 13th, it was paid off completely. And that just means that in October, November, and December of last year, I did not make the monthly payment on it because I couldn't find the money, right? So then I started this method and by starting this method, not only did I find the money to pay it off, but I also found money to put in savings and to pay every bill that we have on, on a monthly basis. So awesome. It's, right? So I don't, I don't, I mean, I agree with you that, that people will say, well, that's because, you know, she, oh my God, how much money does she make and how much bonus does she get? And it's not that much, like, <laughs> it's not, no, it's I don't think it comes down to, to that. It's it's putting your, it's, for me, it's before I spend frivolously, I want to make sure that X, Y, Z is paid and that I have A, B, C in the bank. And we'll talk about that, but. So, I mean, I'll just like say this, the, the biggest like thing for me is that it creates hope and then it, um, and then it builds on itself, right? So it's like those little wins, little wins. Like you said, like, how cool is that? That this time last year, that credit card would have been like, I don't even know how to pay the minimum. Like, I don't right. know that, right? And now it's gone. Like, that is so cool. And the same thing for me with the tax bill. It was like, that would have been crushing. I would have had no idea how we were going to handle that. And this year it was just like, okay, we'll, we'll write a check. Like, right. <laughs> like that's amazing, awesome. right? Um, and the other thing um, I just want to say that re that since we last talked um, has come out for me as another motivator is like, so I'm 40 years old. Um, this is the first time in my entire life 
that I actually feel like I can, I will retire with dignity. Like I will, it's not a question of like, I don't know how I'm going to do that. I don't know if I'm going to retire. I don't know if I'm going to have to work till I die. Like, it's not a question now. Like I have a plan and my husband and I have a plan together. And it's like, we have a plan for paying off the debt, helping the kids out to pay their college bill. So they don't have to have a student loan <laughs> like we did. Um, they're not going to get, be able to go everywhere, anywhere. Right. But, right. Um, and then like, cause you can start, I have started to write down and see like, okay, when this is done, you know, a year and a half from now and everything's paid off. It's like now that money every month can go to my dreams, right? Oh, yeah. Now it can go to retirement. Now it can go to my kid's college fund. Now it can go to whatever, whatever we want, right? Like, and it, that for me is just like, I literally like started to cry when I wrote it out and realized I can actually change like my children's future by doing this. It's like really powerful. That's so great. Awesome. It is a good feeling. It is a good feeling. Uh, well, let's get Amanda in here because we, uh, I know I'm, I'm just watching the time. So I want Pam to be, um, you know, as much part of the conversation as much as she can. Um, so uh, Amanda, how, how are things going your end of the world over there? So I do have to say, you know how much I love the cash envelope method. Mm. However, mm -hmm. the last time I actually went to the bank to get my extra cash from my paycheck was that Friday that um, it was the, the last Friday before we stopped going to work and we started working from home. So I literally on my lunch that Friday drove to the bank came back after my lunch and then that's when we were told to go home and i haven't been to the the bank since to get extra cash however i'm still you know ticking off bills that are due each week and i'm still um going by my paychecks and whatever money is left over from that week's paycheck i've just been rolling it over into my savings account so i'm just you know, um, on my phone through the app in my bank, just transferring money into savings. And I know that puts a little damper on my cash envelope totals, mm -hmm. but it's better than, you know, the money just sitting in my checking account. Um, at least the money is just being put into savings and I'm not touching it. So that's a plus. And what I have been doing I haven't been going out of the house. The last time we went out, really went somewhere, was the grocery store, and we only bought what we needed. And we had waited a couple months, um, you know, to, to stock up. And we literally went through all of our food, household supplies, everything before we went to the store to make a purchase. And we should be good, honestly, for a couple of months now. Wow. Um, but... I mean, I can tell you the totals of when I last left off putting cash in my envelopes, and I can tell you um, the totals of how much I have been paying off towards my two debts. And again, that's the student loans and the car payment, because I, stu I, I still pay that um, monthly. I have to say, though, because of the whole pandemic and everything, I haven't worked my second job i actually stopped seeing clients halfway through march so that kind of puts a damper on things because that extra income isn't coming in it is what it is and after everything's said and done it'll pick back up but um with the student loans i've gone back to paying monthly instead of weekly just because i don't have that extra income Okay, so that so that's what I was going to ask you, Amanda, because I know you and I had talked about it prior to the uh, pandemic. So, um, and I know you know um, it was just you and I having that conversation. So Pam wasn't in on it because um, so, Amanda and I work together, obviously. But so, tell us how much since January to um, let's say not including the pandemic. So January to maybe mid March, how much extra did you actually put towards student loans? Because you had 
you would put a, a good portion because because you made the choice that you wanted to reduce your student loans and you know correct me if i'm wrong and by doing that instead of buying lunch whatever times a week that you were before you took that money and you rolled it into your student loans so how much was that so my total payoff since I started the cash envelope uh, system in January, I've paid a total of 1,211 just towards student loans. And that's what, three, three months? I think I made, yeah, maybe. I made my monthly payment last week for April. Awesome. That's awesome. So that's where I'm at with that. And you know what? It's better than, I actually looked at my history online and before all of this, I was just, making um you know barely a monthly payment and it was nowhere near this so right that's awesome, that's awesome. yeah um, that's awesome if i may i want to share something really quick that i learned about my student loans so i shared i'm 40. um i had a student loan when i graduated um what they don't tell you and what you don't know because you're 18 when you sign the paperwork um is that when you don't make those payments in school typically interest is accruing while you're in school. And then they even usually give you a year sort of after you graduate <laughs> to like not have to pay payments, but interest is accruing and you don't understand that. So I uh, actually, currently I still owe $8,800 on my student loan, okay? Mm -hmm. I have been paying this loan, I'm 40. I have been paying this loan for 20 years. I've been paying my monthly payment for 20 years. Mm -hmm. And I went back and looked at how much I've spent on this loan. My original loan, this is gonna make you fall over. My original loan was $15,000. I have now paid $29,000, oh, $15,000 loan, and I still owe $8,800, which means, what's that, 29 and eight, so almost 40 grand on my 15 grand student loan. So for you to pay off, that thousand dollars in three months, it's not just like whole, like that thousand dollars, you've literally saved yourself thousands and thousands of dollars right. by doing that. And what they don't tell you is, yeah, I'm, I'm a grad student. I don't need to pay my undergrad loans right now because I'm in school. But what they don't tell you is, you know, the number of students who, I'm lucky that I do have a job and I can, pay anything right now, whatever it is that I am paying. But the poor students who take that advice and say, oh, I'm a student, I don't need to pay that off right now, you know, that I'll put that money towards something else. But pay it off while you can. Because I'm in deferment right now because I am a student, but pay anything that you can, it, you know, a hundred bucks a month, whatever. I, but what was really helping me tack off that loan was paying weekly mm. because the interest is so high that by the time you just pay that minimum monthly payment it's really nothing right so. we pay um we pay one of gary's loans um and this wasn't his uh student loan for law school but for uh dentist he wanted to be a, he wanted to be hermie the dentist Oh, he did. Wow. Yes. One of his student loans is really huge still, but, um, you know, that'll come in time, unfortunately. But the other one is, is fairly small, like $4,000. But I feel like we've been paying on that for the last eight years. You know, it just feels like it never goes down. So I think once we get past the credit card debt, um, then we'll start paying, you know, at least two. Either that, I, I got to think about that, too. Maybe... You know, right now when there's extra on a weekly basis, I usually put it toward a credit card because I really want to reduce those. But I think eventually we're gonna, you know, I do have it on my um, debt plan. I do have that smaller student loan on there because, you know, I'd like to, you know, get rid of that within a couple of years. So maybe doing it like you said, like weekly, even if it's a little bit, a little bit on it, plus yeah, the right Yeah. That's so awesome. You're like, so inspiring to so many young people. Seriously, like it's, I, I'm, I'm telling you as like, if I could go back, <laughs> I would do what you're doing. Because think about that, that's insane. Like, oh, by the way, here's a little sad factoid. Cause I'm, I don't know, I like to like um, 
give myself pain. So I actually um, went and did a calculator on if I had taken that payment, my payment was like 157 a month, something like that. If I had taken that payment of 157 a month, like if I had just paid off that, you know, original 15K loan, right? And taken that 157 for the last 18 years, I'd have $645,000 in my wow. retirement account right now. Oh my God. Wow. Think about that. That's, right. Isn't that crazy? Yeah. And that was, I did it on with like 6% interest. I didn't even make the interest like crazy. So on an average return of 6% interest, if you put $157 a month away for 18 years, 20 years, whatever it was, it's $645,000. Great. So yes. I know you're going to be a millionaire. That's what I'm yeah. <laughs> and, and we're still going to be friends, Amanda. Right. <laughs> <laughs> um, we should definitely, you know, once this virus is over and our lives go back to normal and, you know, our site hustles kick back in, we should do that challenge. Put that money, you know, whether it's a hundred bucks a month, put it in, a, in an envelope, don't touch it. Where are we going to be? Mm -hmm. Exactly. Or even for a year, I do the word challenge. Um, on a monthly basis, it was one of the, uh, the Budget Moms um, 2020 savings. She has different challenge every month, but I, I just do her uh, word challenge. So every, you know, each letter of the alphabet, A is $1, B is 2, uh, you know, A through, A through Z, right? So Z, if you have a word with a Z in it, uh, it's Z is $26. So every month I choose a word from how many um, letters, the, the word depends on like my mood, but it also, it also depends on how many weeks in a month. So in April, but in April there was only, there is only four weeks, but because of the mood for April, the word of the month was COVID, C-O-V-I-D. So C, um, you know, ABC is, was $3. I had to put $3 in the envelope. Oh, um, don't quote me on it, but you know, so, but you get the gist of how it's done, mm -hmm. right? So in, in January, my word of the month was dream and it was $41. February was plan was $43. March was free. It was supposed to be free debt. And then Gary was supposed to do the word debt and I was supposed to do the word free. He, he didn't do it. So all he had was ten dollars for free, and then April is COVID, and the amount is fifty-three dollars. So I'm saving that. I'm I'm hoping just to save that January through December, and then taking all that money at the end, and then probably putting it down on debt. Right? Mm -hmm. I mean, that's that's the hope is just to do that, or we can roll it into your sinking fund. Yeah, exactly. Or put it in a sinking fund or a vacation fund for next year. Because I don't think a lot of people go on a vacation this year anywhere, <laughs> unfortunately. That's the one thing like you were talking about, um, you know, your income is down, which is the case for a lot of people right now. Um, but also our expenses are down, right? We're not spending gas money like we were. We're not, right. you know, um, so we're not going out, right? We're not doing those things. So um, hopefully that makes it. That's so cool. I just out of curiosity, like, do you find that because it's kind of fun and it's like you get to pick it, like you're more inclined to do it with the word? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Because she had different challenges for the whole year already planned out. And, you know, some of them, um, I think for April, she, had, she has two challenges a month. So I think for April, one was like every even number in April, save $5 from that day. <laughs> Unlike Amanda, who does the cash envelopes, and, and now obviously in April, I haven't done, I haven't done the cash envelopes in a couple months, but I just do um, an automatic transfer into online uh, online savings. So actually, in the month of April, I just started um, a household savings for like um, we we know that we need to buy a lawnmower this spring. Um, we actually just bought a. Um, power washer so i just started that one i think in the beginning of march uh, no it must have been february i just started another household sinking account online and i already have 235 dollars in it mm -hmm. you know? and then that's 20 yeah that's 25 i do 25 dollars um a, a week um 
on that one. And even my emergency fund, I didn't have. So, you know, January 1st, I didn't have an emergency fund before all, all my budget mom stuff. And I now have $550 in an emergency fund. Good so, job. That's trying awesome. to get it, um, you know, that's my, uh, my goal for at first is a thousand dollars and it's in a, it's in a high interest account online. Um, the word challenges for the, th um, three months, including this month will, is 147. That's all cash that I have at home. Um, I don't know if I should have said that on a tape, but yep. $150, right? <laughs> and then my acorn that's just $5 a week. I just put $5 in the acorn. It's an app. It's like a little investment, you know, and I know the investments are down right now and stuff, but it's only $5 a week. And I already have $107 in that one. Nice. Well, it's like, you know, for me, it's like these little small accounts that might have a little bit of money in them, but they have a purpose, right? So, um, and that's what the budget mom kind of, that's her method behind everything is that your doll will have a purpose. And I think for the three of us, you know, I certainly, you know, like Pam said too, I mean, I have certainly some weaknesses and um, when I'm doing my, bud my budget on a weekly basis, the, the budget mom is to budget your paycheck. So you're not living paycheck to paycheck, but you're actually budgeting paycheck to paycheck. Um, and there's a whole worksheet process that goes along with it. But for me, sometimes in March, in March, my grocery bill was crazy. So every week, I, like this, during this, during this um, pandemic, I feel like, I feel like Suzanne, who's listening, but not talking, like I have to go to the grocery store. doesn't matter what I need. I know I have to go to the grocery store because I don't know. I, I don't, I feel like I'm bored. Grace needs you know, entertainment. Oh, let's just go to the grocery store. But no, I'm not going to go to the grocery store anymore because we have a lot of food and stuff in the pantry and in the freezer. And we need to eat that first. Tell that to Gary. <laughs> that first. Poor Gary. Poor Gary. <laughs> he loves me. Ladies, thank you, Patty, for Bye. having me. Thank you, Pam. Bye. I'll talk to you soon. Thank you. <laughs> um, so... Yeah, that, you know, I, I was going to ask you, um, Amanda, anyways, yeah, did your grocery bill increase at all since you've been home? It did. So we've only been to the grocery store once because prior to the pandemic, I only grocery shopped once a month anyway. Oh, and I, really? I used my $100 a month budget. It's just, you know, it's me and Dan. And we would make meals out of what we had. And, and Dan's very creative in the meals that he makes anyways. And um, it doesn't matter if we have a certain ingredient, we still, we pull it off. But um, like I said before, we were out of everything from food with meats and veggies to, um, you know, bathroom supplies and household stuff. So mm -hmm. we went to BJ's on Saturday and we spent over seven hundred dollars. Wow! I don't know if you can imagine what a seven hundred dollar BJ's haul looks like. I cannot. Do but pictures? it's insane. I do not. It, I didn't. I didn't take any pictures. I should have. You should have taken pictures. I mean, but you know, BJ's everything comes in bulk, and the stuff that we bought literally is going to last us probably until the fall. Wow. And I already had the conversation with Dan, you know, since we are pretty set probably until the fall, what I'm still going to continue to do is that hundred dollars I would normally put in my cash envelope anyway for groceries, mm -hmm. still put it aside because when we do need to do another haul, it's not going to be a big hit all at once. The money is still going to be in that envelope. Right. So, right. so that's what you're doing now though. So you are taking, if you put a hundred dollars a month, I thought that was a week. No. A month? Yep. What, how do you do that? I shop, I mainly shop at Market Basket. Yeah. Sometimes Aldi's, but they don't have everything. So if I just want to go to one store that has everything, I go to Market Basket. And I know what we eat, and we do eat leftovers. Mm -hmm. I do try to plan out meals that I know we can probably get two meals out of. But with, okay, so with BJ's, I mean, I literally had to revamp my whole 
storage space in the basement oh, to sure. get everything, and that was a little bit of time, but I did it. But at least now I see everything that we have. It's right in my face. We're not going anywhere for a little bit, so. And plus, it, it saves us money on, on eating out. And yeah, we can still order takeout and get it delivered to the house, but we have everything that we need now. Right. I, I mean, in, in I probably January, February, just looking at my numbers quick, I budgeted 300 a month. Um, so for me, Gary, just groceries. I, I have a separate thing for BJ's, a separate um, variable, you know, sinking fund for BJ's and a, a separate for miscellaneous household. Um, and so, but groceries in March, and, and this does include in March, I right before the whole pandemic happened, I did, um, I got you know, organic meats, um, a box of meats from uh, a local farm, which, you know, I'll tell you, after eating that meat, I don't think I'm going to go back to eating non-organic meat. Really? It just tastes, it, I'm telling you, it tastes different. When you cook the hamburg, it smells different, and there's not as much grease as regular hamburg. Um, and I only did, um, I only did the small box, which was 100, I think 129, that came with roasts, hamburg, um, stew meat, steaks. So I'm sure it's going to, I'm sure I'm only going to have to buy it once a quarter. Mm -hmm. So even at that, if I can do, if it was 120, I think say $125. And so this in March, when I give you this figure, just take into consideration that that also includes that 125. Um, so I think we did do a lot more grocery shopping in March than we really have to. And um, so we are, my, I had budgeted 300, we spent 670. So that killed me. <laughs> right? That killed me. But then now, like, our. But you should be set for what? One or two? Oh, yeah. Three months? Yeah. I mean, we do go, like, I'll go. Um, we have gone to the grocery store. We do all these. Um, ha I mean, half and half. Gary, you know, uh, buys half and half a lot, like, at least one, you know, at least once a week on Fridays. Um, Sometimes I don't even know, like, I don't know why we're going to the grocery store, you know, like I say, oh, I'm not going. I, I think, you know, because I used to do the same thing. When I was in my apartment, it didn't matter if I had food in the fridge or in the pantry, right. whatever. Every Saturday, you know me, I went to the grocery store. And why? I think we just feel like. It's part of the routine. To. Right. Like, that's part of our weekly chore is to go to the grocery store. Right. But honestly, going from weekly to monthly has opened my eyes and now from monthly to like a couple of months we're eating everything that we have mm -hmm. and, and, and almost up. almost like you're forced to because you don't you're not gonna go out well that and i honestly i don't want to spend the money so and, right right well see i last week i i said to gary like you know um we're not, we're not gonna, we don't need groceries. I, I think we did, I, I'm trying to remember, oh, we went down to the Italian market, um, our friends, Pam and her husband, actually her husband owns um, an Italian market store down the Cape. So we go probably twice a month. So that's like specialty stuff, but we get cheese, we got some pasta, just to try this new pasta. And I, but I'm including those stops at, you know, his place in our, in our, in our grocery budget. Um, and we were doing pretty good about meeting our three hundred dollar budget, and then you know I don't know. Well, I know what happened. We went to the we went to the Italian market on Friday, on Saturday of this past weekend, and then needed half and half. Um, but you know you can't just go into uh, all these for half and half. I think I think I mean I don't I don't think I spent more than twenty bucks there at um, all these this weekend. Um, but we're just we're right around the three fifty mark, and then I have no spend days now through you know, May 1st, which is next week. We really won't need it. Um, I, I found this through the budget mom, actually, one of her freebies. 
Oh yes, yeah. Um, was the um, grocery list thing. So I do have, I call it my ongoing grocery list, like what I have on hand. And then I just put some meal, favorite meal ideas. Um, you know, we do, we do pasta. We try to do pasta once during the week. We do fish, we do fish, um, meatballs or tacos. Like I put our favorite meals and then we kind of, just to kind of rotate them. Um, because I don't want to, I don't, we do have a lot of um, seafood and I don't want to um, do groceries in the next couple of weeks. She also um, has an inventory list. Yes. So like for your dry pantry, you can yep. go through and write what you've got. And I have that and I have that written down too, like the pantry, the tuna, you know, soup, polenta, breadcrumbs, stuff like that. Um, and I do, I do look back at this and go, okay, like what's for, if I'm meal planning for the week, I look back and think, well, what do we have and what, you know, what can I, what do we have and what can, what do I have to work with for meals this week? But I think, but the pandemic and even, you know, you'll see a lot of things on Facebook and people talking about it is that their grocery bill has increased because they just feel it's part of that routine. And if they don't go like, like this whole situation is weird anyways. And then if they're not going to the grocery store, that's part of the routine that they're missing, right? Well, people are also buying in excessive amounts because they're mm. fearful of the unknown. They're so afraid that grocery stores are gonna shut down, that the governor is gonna put us on a statewide lockdown. We're not gonna be able to leave our home. So they're buying in excessive amounts. And that's why the grocery bill's increasing because you know, if you can't leave your house, you can't buy food. Whereas before all this happened, everyone's so used to going out and doing that weekly thing. And, and I'm sure, you know, it's just me and Dan at home. So our food lasts us longer. But right. if you've got families with, you know, three kids and parents and everything else, they kind of do have to go every week. Right. But I, I just think with the pandemic, it's just that extra heightened sense of you know, they're, everyone's afraid. Right. I mean, so do you, do you, do you have any um, short-term goals that you want for the next quarter, which would be very much April, so May, June, July, August, or I mean, or is it really dependent on the pandemic or that doesn't, it's, that's not really affecting you and your numbers at all right now? Well, I don't, think that because of the pandemic it'll it'll hurt my numbers i mean like mm -hmm. i said having that side income where i get paid monthly on top of my uh, weekly checks it did help um i'm probably just gonna step back from paying student loans every week and i'm just gonna do one flat amount for the month um Last weekend, I did sit down and I finished planning my bills from May through December. So my book is filled out. I know what's due and, yeah. and all of that. And that. Is that like just a calendar part of things? Yes. Okay. So I don't know, you know, what my extra cash is going to be and, mm -hmm. and all that. And who knows how long the pandemic will last. Like right. I said, I'm just, for right now, I'm just rolling over whatever's extra that week right into saving. So either way, I have cushion in case something happens. I mean, not in every individual envelope is getting that attention, but it, it is what it is for right now. So I don't know, my short term goal, probably just continue to pay extra each month on my car because because that's been helping. Right. So far, I've paid since January, um, a total of 1189 towards my car. That's awesome. So 1200 on your student loans and another, say, 1100 on your car. That's awesome. Never That's mind awesome. the cash totals that I did well, have. Right. Yeah, and yeah, exactly. Not including the cash that you've actually rolled over mm -hmm. in your envelopes. Do you, so actually, you know, um, so for people who don't know, I'm taking a college English class and I've been writing a lot about the budget mom. <laughs> Every essay I read about, the, I write about the budget mom. Gary says the 
the professor's gonna think you're a nut. I'm like, no, because I'm like, it's really in, like, it really interests me. So it's easy to write about, right? It's, she's a college student. I mean, as a college student, so it's easy to write about something that you really like. Yeah, if you've ever tried to write a paper on something that you don't like, right? It, exactly. No, it doesn't, it doesn't go well. That you know. That's why I took for my first college course. That's why I took English because I like to write. Mm -hmm. Don't talk to me in six months when I'm taking psychology or I don't mean I like psychology, but to write a paper about what can I write about psychology budget mom. I'll be but <laughs> my whole college career I'll just write about the budget mom. <laughs> I should be getting money. The uh, mental the mental health effects. Right. How how debt influences our mental health. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. One on one. Yeah. Um. But I was going to say that um, I lost my train of thought. Uh, Your college yeah. course. Yeah, so my, I guess my point was that um, I can hear Gary and Grace in the background. Kind of funny. <laughs> Gary sings, uh, this might go live, so I won't say it, but um, we've been singing a lot of um, Elsa. Let it go in this house. <laughs> there's, there's, there's your mental health tip. Just let it go. Um, you know, if we can just talk briefly, because it's quarter of eight, but, we, you know, um, I haven't seen Amanda in almost six weeks because of this pandemic, so we can't talk about it at work. We might as well talk about it here. But do you, um, I was wondering, because when I first got the Budget Mom book, I don't, I don't know if I did it back in January, but I did start doing it in March. Um, and I, I think I did a little bit in February, um, just a little bit. So really March was the first time I really did it is the comparison sheets mm -hmm. at the end of, um, at the end of like each month, there's like, where did my money go? And it's right. March spending comparisons. So, so you put in like from February to March, what your um, differences are, I mean, just for an example, in, in February, we spent 257 in groceries and in March, we spent 670. So that was like a big difference. Household miscellaneous, um, we spent 203 in February and 136 in March. Cause that was one of the things that I really wanted to go down a little bit more on. I love Walgreens and I love Amazon, but uh, again, you know, I, I don't think we have to spend that much. And of course, uh, especially now that, you know, we're all home and you have extra time that you're on online and you're shopping, you're looking at things, you're saying, oh, absolutely. oh we could use that. Right. Absolutely. But I do find that these sheets are really, so I've already set it up, you know, because April's coming to an end next week. So I've already kind of, not, not, I haven't added the numbers yet but I've just put it in those sheets. So I, I don't know if you use that, but um, it's kind of a, a, a good thing to see exactly, you know, what you've done the previous month, right? And what you're doing now and comparing the two, because say, you know, like I look at March and say, okay, we spent $670 in groceries, which is to me a lot. Mm -hmm. um, and it's, you know, um, four, it was 413 more than the previous month. So I obviously don't want to be that high in April. Um, and that gives me a good idea of what to budget for May. The let, you know, so I, I didn't know if you use those sheets, but you know, I'm just going to say that it is kind I, of a tool. Yeah, I haven't used those sheets. What I do is for the weekly paychecks, I write in the section where it says money thoughts. Oh yes, okay, yeah. And you know, once I've divvied up my extra cash and I know um, the amounts that are going into each category, I'll write like a, a little thought on that money. So the last time I actually wrote in that section was the last time I did go to the bank. Mm -hmm. And I wrote how, you know, this was a good distribution of leftover funds from my weekly check. Um, and then normally I would put my entire monthly check that I get from my side job right into savings, but I wanted to know exactly how much I could spend just because I didn't know where things were headed with the virus. So, um, I kind of divvied up that money, which is something I normally wouldn't do. I would just normally put the whole thing into savings. But mm -hmm. again, I wanted to make sure, do I have enough cushion for groceries and, um, you know, dog food, things like that. So 
I like to use that little money thought section just because, you know, every week's different. Some weeks I have extra cash that I can um, divide up into the categories. Sometimes I don't. Sometimes my whole check yeah. just goes into different uh, debt areas. So I think that keeps me on track for the most part. Right. And I actually just um, copied a couple of, um, I needed one more tracker in April, and then I was setting up my May this morning, um, and I I don't love that page. I don't love that page that, um, you know, I like the bill tracker, but I don't love the money thought page, because I don't use the top, you know, even if I were to pull out cash, I don't use the top that much, but I did put a money thought one down and i wonder which one it was if it was right before the pandemic because i do remember writing something ironically enough um but but for for may i took out that money thought page and just printed out another um paycheck um paycheck bill tracker oh yep it was um march 20th yeah actually so yep that was the first week of the coronavirus now so i did put this is the only time that i use this page since january and so march 16th coronavirus started a shutdown on march 16th it's very weird and scary as of now i'm still working but town hall is closed to the public um gary goes to the office grace is out of school for three weeks <laughs> you know which means babysitters but you know we were able to get some financial help um for sitters you know, um, with some of the programs that she's in. So, I mean, that's that's a huge plus. We do still some have um, somebody that comes to the house twice twice a week, and then um, we have our regular um, hour hourly person for a couple of hours a day, which you know really we need. I mean, that's a whole. That's what I was going to say before when you were talking about meal planning and stuff. Um, you know, I was going to say that. I mean, not only the three of us, you know, with the age, you know, we have somebody who's 20, you know, in their 20s, uh, you know, mid 20s, early 40s, and somebody 50, like, it's just a good, the three of us have, have a, a good connection, right? You're representing, like Pam said earlier, you know, you're representing a good, a lot of the young people and people getting out of college and going for their masters and worried about student loans and, um, but you're doing so good with your uh, budgeting that, you know, that's a real eye-opener on stuff. And then Pam's like 40. Um, I'm going to say I'm middle-aged and not her. <laughs> so, um, but we, the next time we meet, we can talk a little bit, maybe, um, you know, in another month or so, if things kind of um, relax a little bit and we can go live from one of the studios. I was thinking actually my back patio. Um, to talk about meal planning because I know Pam does some meal planning. I know that you do, obviously, with the, you know, um, stockpile that you have in the basement and organizing that stuff. So if you, if you do anything more and you want to take pictures of stuff, try to you know try to do it a long way versus with your phone this way. Try to do it like this. Okay. It's easier to get on. Um, according to uh, Derek, it's easier to get on our, um, the website and stuff. And then um. I was going to say meal planning, and there was one other, um, you know, just talking about, uh, I know Pam and I have gone back a hundred times before about, um, and it's, you know, I do a lot of stuff on the blog recently about staying home with um, Grace. God love her. I do love her, but, you know, sometimes staying at home is, and I do, and I am working. Um, I go into work six hours a day, um, and then I, you know, I do an hour from home. And uh, I go in from eight to two. Every day. Yep. Because I can't, because I, because really I can't do my job from home. You know what I mean? Like, I, I mean, I could, I can check emails and, but as far as processing the permits, I really can't do it here. Mm -hmm. A, I wouldn't want the money here. And, and, you know, people drop it off or mail it in and, we, and we're pretty busy, believe it or not. Another, another topic for another time, right? But yep, I do still go in and he goes in. So, you know, we try to share the, um, you know, I just, you know, 
it's not just about budgeting my I guess my you know my thought process is the three of us have a lot a lot in common um and we have differs as well and you know the whole meal planning stuff i know i do it you do it i know pam does it so maybe next time we can talk about budgeting a little bit and then talk about meal planning and how we figure out that for the week mm -hmm. um, so that would be good um so i think we're doing good i'm, I'm gonna text pam later and just ask her what her short-term goals are so we can i'm kind of keeping just a running thing so we can really talk about it because in a year from now can you imagine what we really do we saying if we're already yeah if we're if we're paying down twelve hundred dollars extra in student loans and a hundred at that twelve hundred dollars extra on car loans and paying credit cards off and um one last thought that i had was that i just started doing having a checking account cushion um of at least 20 to 25 dollars a week so again so if i go like today we went to bj's and um there was a lot of people in bj's but you know you have to they ask are you going to pay cash or credit i said i said credit because gary wasn't right there and he had the cash on him so um we did pay with credit and, i mean you know my debit card not credit but not credit card debit card and then put the cash into the bank you know an hour later but um you know it's good to have that cushion because then that kind of protects you if you have to go over a little bit it, we didn't go over it but um yeah so i know i'm kind of mumbling so it must be close to the eighth it, the whole hour suzanne uh suzanne is still there suzanne from fairhaven do you have anything enlightening you want to say or good listening for now okay we'll take it she's, she's absorbing it all in i know when i talk to her on the side she looks at me like i'm kind of crazy but well, i don't, I don't want to be that you know that middle age woman who is still paying off from her college years right i hope by then that you know the money that i do have instead of paying off loans goes towards fun and exciting things she gave us a thumbs up that means something <laughs> she's saying yeah that's it um all right so i think we have some set goals for the next um i mean i would just say for me uh you know it's it i'd like i'd love to i'm gonna um i paid off one credit card and i'm uh my next one is uh about thirty five hundred dollar credit card so i'd like to get rid of that one within like three to six months personally mm -hmm. um and then have only one for household which that has a balance as well about the same thing it's Gary's, but it's household but i want to get rid of mine first because i you know i mean i do handle the finances in the house we're both i know that you and dan do it separately but we both um, he just says, sure, whatever you're doing until, but I will say this about Gary. He was at a hundred dollars, getting a hundred dollars every two weeks. And I just reduced him to 75. And he's like, well, what do you, what do you mean 75? And I said, well, yeah, you're home. Yeah. What are you really doing with that money? Other than if, do you know what you're doing with it? Right. Do you know what you're doing with it? Um, I said, take the 25 that I'm not, you know, I'm not like handing you an extra 25 and put that 25 in the household account that I put already $25 a week because we know we need a lawnmower. We just bought the power washer. We know we need a lawnmower. That's going to be $300. And I also started, um, this is on a, um, a bank called Alley, A-L-L-Y. They, you, you can have your savings account the 225 is in the savings account but then you can do buckets or sinking funds from that and decide a percentage of what you want to go in there hmm. so like i think you know my biggest thing is to to up the household fund so i put 65 percent of whatever i deposit goes into the household fund and then i think 10 percent goes into gracie's birthday um a vacation is um a vacation is like 5%, you know what I mean? So that's kind of cool. So you can actually do buckets. A -L -L. So, so going back to Gary, I mean, have you asked him, you know, just for one day, 
write down and track what you spend your money on because then he would be able to report to you and say, well, I don't need all this money that I thought I would each week. Let's mm -hmm. cut it down and put that towards something else. Or he could look at it and say, I didn't even realize, you know, I spent $20 on lunch every day. Right, right. right. Um, yes, I've actually, I took his, uh, that account that that money goes into since January and I did the tracking. So January, February, March, I drove, wrote down the track and I gave him the, the tracking slips and said, here, like, all right, you take it on from here. I don't think he's done anything with it. But now that he's at work and um, we're taking coffee from home and breakfast from home, I I think since we've, so the six weeks that we've really been in this pandemic, I think he hasn't spent money. But, you know, because sometimes he'll go into OSHA state or something and I'll say, he's like, well, what am I paying? Am I using a joint card for this? I'm like, no. Like, you got, you got a debit card, don't you? He's like, well, well this is household stuff. Like, but it's coffee for the second time this week that you want another big box of coffee. So pony up that 1990 from your, uh, you know. But, but hey, it, it, hey, I'm glad he went, he's okay with going from 100. Well, well, you know, you can't, you can't keep saying, I want to get, this is what I'm trying to, and this is what, right, this is the whole, if you have a plan for your money, you can't say, oh, we need this, we need this, we need this, we need this, we need this. If you don't take it from here, you've got to take it, it's got to come from somewhere else. And right? if you don't have all that money that you need to cover each thing, like with me, not every week I get to put money into my personal account that I can do whatever I want with, coffee, yeah. lunch, whatever. And that's just how it goes because that money has to be put towards something that really is needed. Right. You have to can't, plan. can't pull dollar. from an empty pot. And I think a lot of people, they're used to, well, you know, if I need groceries, um, but I really need my daily coffee on the way into work every day, I'll mm -hmm. just take out of the grocery money. But then mm -hmm. when you go to the grocery store, you don't have as much for groceries by the end of the week because right. you keep taking from it. Well, and uh, just briefly, Real briefly, uh, there are definitely some people who have lost their job, and um, I'm, I'm not one of those people. I'm still getting paid, and Gary's still getting paid, and so we're. I feel fortunate that, you know, that that we're we we are we are in that situation, and I and I feel sorry for people who are in the situation who have lost their job or applying for unemployment because, you know, the number of people that are applying for unemployment, unfortunately by the time they get their unemployment, they, they might be back to work, right? So they're probably gonna go at least two or three weeks with no money. Mm -hmm. And and because they've lived paycheck to paycheck, it's gonna be difficult for them. So I really have empathy for people, but I think even, even that those people, they still need to stop thinking of a plan for their money now, you know, because, you know, I am fortunate because I'm still working, but on the same, you know, on the same token, I, I feel like, you know, if, if I didn't have the budget mom and I wasn't doing anything and it was, you know, this time last year, you know, I'd be more stressed, even though I am going to work, I'd be more stressed mm -hmm. about how am I going to pay this and, you know, how am I going to do this, how am I going to do that? It's just, it's just, it's just a stressful time for, for me, it's a stressful time. Um, the, thank God it's not the money. For me, it's just more stressful time that Grace is home and, you know, 10 steps forward and 10 steps back for her when she gets back into her routine of school. That's where my stress is during the pandemic. So I, everybody has stress during it for whatever reason. So I'm, I, I'm empathy. I'm empathizing with people. Um, but once you get back on track, when you get, and this is what we were talking about briefly, um, you know, because we are trying to, to, to you know, end, end our topic here is that the stimulus checks, yep, it's great. It's great that the you know the government um, is is sending people, and some people have already received their stimulus checks. Um, we have not. Um, I had to actually go in and put in our bank account information, so I'm sure that's you know. But I know I somebody said today that they're doing checks now, like Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. There's a new batch, and, and I'm not I'm not in a rush to get it to be honest because I don't want to get that money and just spend it because. I got it, you know, and I think some people are in that mentality mm -hmm. that, 
well, I'm getting an extra, you know, $2,400, right? If you're married, it's an automatic $2,400. So, you know, oh, I'm going to get this with that. And then, you know, no, you know, I kind of, I really, I really want to do a paycheck worksheet with it. I want to do a worksheet with it. And whether it's funding all my sinking funds or, you know, um, paying down debt, I really, I really want to use my word for the year. I really want to be intentional with that money. And I think I can be that because I'm doing this process. And if I right. wasn't doing this process, I think it would be very easy to say, ooh, 2400 what can I do with it? Ooh, let me buy, you know, I just want to be intentional. But a year, a year ago, I think you would have done that. You would have been thinking in your mind, okay, we've got 2400 coming in. Let's make a list of all the things that we could buy with it. But Absolutely. now you definitely have a different mindset, which puts you a step ahead of everyone else because now you are going to be aware and you're going to put that money where it needs to go. Mm -hmm. Now, whether you decide to put that whole thing onto a credit card to pay it down or you decide to take half of it and stick it in your, your emergency fund, your savings, whichever, you're still going to be intentional with it. Thank you. And I think that's, that's a, st a one up from everyone else. And like you said, you're fortunate enough where you and Gary are still working and a lot of other people, they're not. So, you know, what's going through their minds is how are they going to pay rent? And I'm sure they're already backed up on, on their rent payments. Mm -hmm. How, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, how are they going to feed their kids and, you know, things like that. But I think with your process and what you're doing, wherever you decide to put that money, it's not fun money right now. It's no. to be used with intent. Right. Absolutely. So that's my, that's our, that is get personal with Patty for today. I want to thank Amanda and thank um, Pamela who was on with us earlier and you know, Suzanne for watching and listening. And um, you know, the, you know, for anyone who has lost their job or is really having some financial issues right now with the whole pandemic, um, just be intentional, be um, be safe out there, be healthy, stay healthy. And um, just remember that in my old saying, my grandmother used to say all the time, this too shall pass. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. Good night.